Sounds. How does sound travel? Sound is form of energy caused by vibrations of objects. Sound needs a medium to travel. This media can be gases like air, liquid like water, and solid like a wall. For example, when we beat a drum, the tight drum skin vibrates very fast up and down. The vibration from the drum skin forces the surrounding air molecules to vibrate. As the drum skin moves up, it squashes the surrounding air molecules closer together. When the drum skin moves down, the squash air molecules squash their neighboring air molecules, which in turn squash their neighboring air molecules and so on. The vibration from the drum skin is passed along from one air molecule to other air molecules until it reaches our ears. The air molecules in our ears also vibrate and our sense of hearing detects the vibrations. Then our brain perceives it as a sound. When we speak or sing, the vocal cord in our throat vibrates. The vibrations from our vocal cord pass to our surrounding air molecules and then to the air molecules in the ears of our friends. Their ears detect the vibrations and hear it as sound. So, this shows that sound can travel through gases. When we are swimming in a swimming pool, we can hear people knocking on its wall very clearly. This is because the vibrations from the knocking of the wall pass to the water molecules in the swimming pool and then to our ears. The vibrations are detected by our ears and we can hear the sound. This proves that sound can travel through liquids too. How did the American Indians in the past detect distant horses? In the past, the American Indians listened to the ground of distant horses by putting their ears on the ground. As the horses gallop, their hooves eat the ground and vibrate the molecules of the ground. The vibrations travel through the molecules of the ground and then reach the ears of the American Indians. This shows that sound can travel through solids. Pitch and loudness of sound. What makes sound so different from one another? In general, we can tell that two sounds are different by their pitch and loudness. Pitch is how low or high a sound is. It depends on the frequency of vibrations of the sound. The frequency of a sound is the number of vibrations in a second. Its unit is hertz. When the long free end of the ruler is flicked, the ruler vibrates up and down slowly. The number of vibrations made in a second is less and therefore it has a low frequency. The sounds we can hear from it has a low pitch. When the short free end of the ruler is flicked, the ruler vibrates up and down quickly. There are more vibrations made in second and it has a higher frequency. Therefore, we can hear a high-pitched sound from it. A low-pitched sound has a low frequency. Sound produced by a tuba has a low pitch. As a tuba player blows air into a tuba, the air molecules vibrate at a low frequency in the long tube of the tuba. A high-pitched sound has a high frequency. A whistle produces a high-pitched sound. The air blown into a whistle 
vibrates at high frequency. Let's know more. By listening to a person's voice, we can identify whether the voice belongs to a man or a woman. This is because a woman speaks higher pitched voice than a man. Dogs and cats detect some sounds that we cannot hear. They can hear sounds with high frequencies. Loudness. Sounds are also different in how loud and how soft they are. The loudness of a sound depends on the amount of energy in the vibration of a sound. When we type with a keyboard, we gently tap the keys with our fingers. This uses less energy and therefore the vibration is weak and makes a soft sound. We can hear a loud sound when we hit our fist hard on the table. This is because we use more energy to hit the table and the vibration contains more energy. When we are near to a radio, we can hear the loud sound from it. However, its sounds become softer when we walk farther away from it. This is because when sound travels, some energy is used up to pass along the vibrations from the source to our ears. The amount of energy becomes less when the sound reaches our ears and therefore we hear a softer sound. When we play any musical instruments, we are actually changing the pitch and the loudness of the sounds. This creates a huge range of sounds. By arranging these sounds in a proper sequence, music is produced. Let us examine a recorder. When we blow a recorder with all the holes open, a high pitch sound is produced. Without pressing the holes, the column of air in it is shorter. Therefore, the air vibrates faster. What happens when we blow it with all the holes closed? When all the holes are closed, the column of air in it becomes longer. The air vibrates slower. This produces a low pitch sound. Therefore, by closing certain holes, and blowing with different strength, different sounds are produced, making beautiful music. Noise Some sounds are pleasant, while others are unpleasant. Loud and unpleasant sounds are called noises. We can use a sound level meter to measure the loudness of a sound. The unit of loudness of a sound is decibel. The chart below shows the loudness of different sounds. Let's know more. The word famous decibel is named after a scientist, Alexander Graham Bell, the inventor of the telephone. It was first used in quantifying the audio levels in telephone circuits. Listening to noises above 90 decibels for an extended period of time can damage the ears and cause deafness. Noise from construction sites, rock music, and aircraft contribute to noise pollution. What are other sources of noise pollution that you know? What can we do to reduce and prevent noise pollution? When we are listening to music or watching television, we should keep the volume at a reasonable level to reduce noise pollution to our surroundings.
we must wear ear protectors when working with loud machines to protect our ears. We should also stay away from the sources of noise. Thanks!